I went from law to social work thinking that I wanted to think more holistically, I wanted to think about more comprehensive solutions. When I worked on homeless litigation and there were no laws protecting the homeless, um, I could say, okay, how can I use the existing law and argue that a family who doesn't have a house, who is homeless, is entitled to help, is entitled to be housed in a shelter or, or to be protected. And so the thing about law is that you can do that, you can be creative, you can bring it into a courtroom, and you can argue based on the law, and you could help a lot of people doing that. And we established a right to shelter. But when you go into a court of law and do that, you're just focusing on the law. You can't say, why do people become homeless? What can we do to prevent homelessness? What kind of housing is best for them to prevent future homelessness? That's social work. That's when you look at the whole environment. You look at the political context, the policy context, the community context, and you can think of solutions. But lawyers don't do that. They win their case, very helpful, very good for lawyers and social workers to work together, but they can't look at the big picture. My research projects combine law and social work, and um, I look at legal institutions and legal settings like the administrative fair hearing system or the family court child welfare abuse and neglect cases, and I look to see what happens in a courtroom beyond the legal part of the courtroom, but what happens in the dynamic between the judge and the parent that comes before the judge. What happens when a poor person asking for welfare benefits goes before a judge pleading for those benefits. So I'm looking at the dynamics and the interactions, and I'm looking to see what kind kind of legal system we have, how it treats poor people, is it fair, do they receive justice in this legal system, or are there problems with it? For me personally, one of the most gratifying moments was to be asked to train a group of judges and to go before 50, 60 judges who do this day in and day out and get them to see what they're doing a little bit differently. So a lot of people in the legal profession, you're focused on outcomes, right? So what's the outcome? And there's a lot of research that talks about how you're treated in a legal setting, in a courtroom, actually can be more important to the person than the actual outcome. That if they feel respected and listened to, if they feel the person was neutral and heard both sides of the argument, that even if they lose the case, they come out saying, I got justice. I was understood. I got to say what I needed to say. And so many of the judges were surprised by that. You know, they were very focused on getting a decision out, figuring out the outcome. So just being able to communicate to judges and see them understand how they can behave in the courtroom, their attitude, the way that they treat people, can really change that person's experience, that to give somebody respect and dignity in that setting. Because that person coming in, they're seeing a judge and they're feeling disadvantaged, they're feeling like they can't participate in that environment. But a judge can do certain things so that they are comfortable, that they can say what they need to say. And I think that it was gratifying to know that um, in those hearing rooms, judges who absorb that message were going to treat people with more respect, that it was going to be a different experience.